Hello, welcome everyone back to the Inverted Wonder. Today I'm going to be queuing into Mayurasana Vitalasana, which is a cat cow pose. So for today's practice, I'll be going through um, a few different variations and modifications. So make sure that you're listening to your body and you're doing what feels good in your body. So even if I am queuing or doing something differently, know that you hold the power to do what feels good in your body. So for today's practice, uh, you may need a few props. So uh, one prop might be a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, you can use a yoga belt, you can use a scarf, a piece of cloth, a piece of rope, something that you can tie into a loop. For this practice, you may also need a blanket, so any kind of standard blanket, and you can provide a little bit of cushion. And then you may also need this uh, chair. So it's not imperative that the back of the chair is pushed out. Any chair, even a couch cushion or a comfy love seat or something like that, would still be able to work for this practice. So uh, Mayurasana or Vitalasana, which is cat-cow pose, are usually linked together. Now you can do them separately if you'd like, but most times in a yoga practice, this is, this is part of the warm-up, and it gets your body kind of moving. So we'll go ahead and start with um, cueing into the pose, and then I will show you the different modifications and variations that you can take to feel good in your body. So, to start, we come up to our hands and our knees. So you want to make sure that your hips are stacking over your knees, meaning you don't want your hips out here, and you don't want your hips back towards your ankle, but right on top of your knees. Next is making sure that your shoulders are underneath your wrists, so again, you're not way out here, and if you're not way back here. So right underneath your wrist, you also want to make sure that your hands are um, shoulder distance apart, so you're not stuffing your hands way out. Your hands are also not touching. touching. So um, go ahead and stretch out your fingers, start to grip into the ground. So we're not going to be moving our hands much, but if this is a good place to get used to what it feels like to grip into the ground. Now, if your toes you have some choices, you can curl for more stability if you'd like, or you can lay your feet flat, pressing down with the tops of your feet up to you. So first we start in this neutral spine, where we're making a table-like position with our back. And then we'll go ahead and inhale, drop the stomach, we're going to curl and lift the tailbone up towards the sky. If you feel a little pain your neck, we'll go ahead and gaze up towards the sky getting a deep back bend. On the exhale, you're going to go ahead and curl, push the tailbone down, scoop the belly in, drop the head, chin to chest, and then imagine like you're arching up in your back like a cat. This is my asana cat pose. Inhale, dropping the belly, pushing our hips or double down, hips up towards the sky, head up for big salasana, cow pose. So I'm still pushing into the ground, I'm not dropping my chest. Inhale, rounding, tuck the tailbone, belly in, chin to chest, upper back, arching up towards the sky. And then inhale, dropping the belly, rolling the shoulders back and down, lifting the hips, lifting the head for a deep back bend. So you can do that a few times, um, matching breath to movement if that feels good for you. So usually, in my Yurasana or cat pose, we would be exhaling, big Svalasana uh, cow pose, we would be inhaling. But you can always switch them, and I recommend that you do. See how that feels different in your body. Now, so for some modifications, if that felt uncomfortable for you, you have some options. So if you find that it's a new problem, and maybe you don't have the luxury of having a yoga mat, you can always place down um, a blanket, Underneath your knees, you can always roll up your yoga mat to make it a little bit thicker. So this makes it a little bit nicer on the knees, and then you will continue the same way. Now, if your knees are, you can't be on them at all, you have some options. So either seated, you can bring a block or a blanket like this, come put your hips on. Uh, just on the edge, that way your hips are a little bit higher than your knees. You can practice a seated Mayurasana or Vitsalasana. So how to do that, you bring your hands to your knees. Inhale, you puff your chest up. So we're getting that deep back bend that we were um, in cow pose. 
And then exhaling, rounding chin to chest, pulling our back out, back away from our hands to our knee. Inhaling, puffing our chest up, looking up, elbows squeezing back. And exhaling, chin to chest, rounding the back, hands to knee. So you can see that it's the same movement in your spine. Now, maybe on your knees it's not comfortable, maybe a cross legged position is also not comfortable for you. This is where you'll need to use a chair. So like I said, you can use any chair, whether it's a regular steel chair like this, a couch, a seat, a love seat, a desk chair, honestly, anything that you can sit on. So what you'll want to do, it's going to be the same as the seated, okay, so come to the edge of your seat, you're going to sit up nice and tall, so you can see I've got that neutral spine in my back like I did before, and just like we did with seated, we're going to be moving our hands, so inhale, puff our chest up, elbows in, gaze up if that feels okay, otherwise you can just look neutral, getting that bend in, and then exhale, rounding, hands go to knees, chin to chest, Feel like someone's pulling that back, back up in you. So again, you can see it's the same movement in the spine. You inhale, gaze up, feels comfortable. Elbows in, back then, and exhale, rounding, chin to chest, pulling our back up, hands in your back. You can see it's the same movement in your spine, and you'll get the same benefit. So, whether you need to do it seated, on a chair, or on your hands and knees, you can practice this. The last modification before I get to the variations that I would like to show is using a yoga strap. So, unwind your yoga strap. Like I said, if you don't have a yoga strap, if you have a belt or a piece of rope or a piece of cloth, anything that you can tie into a loop. So, I'm going to loop the strap, same thing with a belt or a scarf, whatever you have available with you at home. Okay, so now what we're going to do is maybe you want to try it on your hands and knees, but you find that you're not stable, whether your arms are shaking or your legs feel like they're not stable. We can use the use of a yoga strap to build stability in our shoulders and our hips. So we'll start with our uh, shoulders first. So kind of bring the strap so that we are shoulder distance apart. You'll bring the strap in your arms in the circle, and then you want to make sure that your hands are shoulder distance apart. Okay, so. Widen that out a little bit, mix around a bit, everyone's shoulders like this. Okay? So then when you're ready, just like we did on our hands and knees, if you need to bring that blanket under your knees, go ahead and do so. <clears throat> but again, stacking our hips over our knees, shoulders over our arms, now we have that pressure, we can push into the outer edges of our hand or arms into that strap. Inhale, drop the belly up. Shoulders back and down, hips up, exhale, chin to chest, round the back, drop the head, belly button in, and curl down the heels. So this just helps to build stability in your arms if you feel like you don't quite have the upper body strength to maintain that. Um, another place of stability that sometimes uh, we may feel is in our hips. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the strap and make sure that it's hip distance which for some is about the same as shoulders, but everybody's body is different. So come to bring the strap to the tip distance. And then you're going to bring your feet inside of the strap and bring the strap up to your thighs. So again, you want to make sure that your feet, knees, and hips are all in one line, so adjust it as needed. And then come back onto your hands and your knees. Again, you can place a blanket underneath if you'd like. Make sure that that strap is about mid thigh. And now, this should get your lower body in alignment. So your knees should now be hip distance apart. Remember, you keep the hips stacked over the knees. And then you can go ahead and do the same thing. So go ahead and inhale, drop your belly, and move your head up over the hips. Back bend, and then exhale, grounding chin to chest, tucking the bones, scooping belly in. Upper back and pull towards the sky. And while I'm doing this, I'm pressing my legs out against the strap to feel that resistance, to build that stability in my hips. So, if that's your practice today, if you want to try any of those modifications, um, please do. Now, I'm going to go into a few variations that you can do in your pack cow. 
So the first modification, if you've got the wrist flexibility, is of course flipping the wrist back behind you. So you'll notice that I went out, right? So away from my body to twist around. Don't go into your body. Hurt your wrist. So if you'd like, you can twist if you've got the flexibility in your wrist and then doing the same thing, making sure that your shoulders are on top of your wrist and that your hips are on top of your knees. You can inhale, look up, drop your belly, hips up towards the sky, and then exhale, rounding in the back, pressing your tailbone down, sweeping your belly. And you can do that a few times if that feels okay in your wrist. Uh, the other modifications, or sorry, variations for uh, Mayurasana Fixed Vasana is actually a uh, sunbird pose. So um, it's actually a different pose all on its own, but it's lifting your left foot and lifting your right, right? Arm inhale, lifting up, and then exhale, bringing your elbow to touch your knee, right? Rounding in that Mayurasana cat pose. Inhale, lifting in that cow pose. And you can do that a few times, um, alternating right, right arm, left leg, and then left arm, right leg. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, short tutorial for Mayurasana, Vipsalasana. A few benefits of these poses is that it stretches the, um, the backside and the torso as well as the neck. It massages the spine and all the organs in your belly. It builds stability and flexibility in your spine, again up towards your shoulders and down towards your hips. And then it also strengthens your wrists, or strengthens your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders as well as your hips and your knees. So all those major joints um, get strengthened in this post. So thank you so much for watching today. Please like, share, and comment in the section below on how it goes for you. Otherwise, I will see you next time on Mutiny Morning. Bye everyone!